Hey, welcome to my kitchen table. Uh, it is Heidi here with The Pampered Chef, and today we are talking stoneware. So I wanted to give a little stoneware 101, if you will, um, and chat about really the heart and the foundation of Pampered Chef. So if you don't know, uh, it all started with a pizza stone. Back in October of 1980, when Doris Christopher, our founder, uh, hosted her very first cooking show, she cooked a frozen pizza on a piece of stoneware and made believers out of everybody. Now, of course, our stoneware has evolved over the years and we've made um, so many different pieces and styles and advancements, um, but it is still kind of a foundation piece and something that we hold near and dear to our hearts here at Pampered Chef. But maybe it's not something you're familiar with, or maybe you have some stoneware at home and you're like, I just don't know what to do with it. Or maybe you're a little nervous about it because you don't think you can clean it properly. Whatever the situation is, we're going to answer some of those questions together today. So hang with me um, and hopefully you'll learn something new. So let's go ahead and start with some just foundation info. So first and foremost, all of our stoneware is mined, molded, and fired here in the United States. So it is made in the USA and we love that. Um, secondly, there are three different styles of stoneware. So let's just run through those really quickly. So here I have my uh, pizza stone. And this is just our traditional unglazed stoneware, or if you're saucy, you might wanna call it naked stoneware. So this is the traditional stoneware that people often think of when they think of pizza stones or pampered chef. We also have partially glazed stoneware. So we've got that raw, um, naked, exposed stoneware here, but we've got a really pretty um, muted, uh, classic gray, uh, glaze on the outside. So really beautiful to go from oven to uh, kitchen table. Um, kind of a great entertaining piece that's really, really pretty. So that's partially glazed. And then we have our whole line of fully glazed stoneware. So that means all of the surfaces are glazed. Again, it's that classic gray with kind of a neutral tan here. Um, this is oven safe, this is stoneware, but it is fully glazed. All right, so those are kind of the three types and we're gonna dig into that just a little bit more as we keep talking. Now our unglazed stoneware and that partially glazed stoneware that has the exposed stone on the cooking surfaces, the reason stoneware cooks so fabulously um, <clears throat> are a couple of things. One, uh, they have formulated it so it has the perfect uh, porosity. That means it's just porous enough to be wicking away some of that moisture from your cookies, your breads, your pizza crusts, your pie crusts, leaving you that like perfect flaky crispy texture that you want. But it's not porous enough that it's going to hold on to flavors or anything like that. So you can legit cook like fish on a piece of stone one day and you can put your cookies on it the next day and your cookies are not going to taste like fish. Um, it's got just the perfect porosity. The other reason that stones cook so beautifully is that a piece of stoneware is going to maintain the perfect temperature of your oven. So if you set your oven to 375 degrees, let's say, your stone is going to come to temperature at that 375 and hold it there. And that pretty much means your food isn't going to burn. Now, if you've cooked in glass or metal pans, you know you have to be a little more cautious. Things burn. And that's because your glass and metal pans, they actually heat up to above the cooking temperature of the oven. So the things that are touching the sides of your pan or the bottom of your pan are gonna burn if you don't pay attention to them. Not the case with stoneware. So if you tend to burn things, or if you have an oven that's a little temperamental um, and maybe doesn't hold its temperature quite as well, get stoneware. You're not gonna burn your cookies, you're not gonna burn your rolls, your pizza's gonna be great, and it's gonna come out perfect, okay? So, <clears throat> so those are some reasons that we really, really love the results that we get when we cook with stoneware. 
Now, how many of you have stones that are older than about a year and a half? So uh, fall of 2020, Pampered Chef redesigned our um, unglazed stoneware, our naked stones. Uh, they came out with a new formulation called Stone Fusion. Better than ever, stronger than ever, and more versatile than ever. So if you were a little hesitant to have a stone before, now's the time and you don't have to be afraid. Now let me show you how you can tell the difference here. If you have a stone that has the brand new Stone Fusion formulation, you are going to have a bottom that looks like this with this pretty wavy pattern and the logo in the middle with the happy spoon, okay? That indicates that this is stone fusion. And what that means is you can use this under the broiler. So it is uh, heat safe under the broiler up to 550 degrees. Now the old stones you could not use under the broiler. They were a max temp of 400 degrees. So stronger and able to withstand more heat. The other thing that we love about the new Stone Fusion, you can preheat these stones. Our previous stones, you should not have preheated. Um, you would put them in with the food already on them. But these, we can pop in the oven first and get them nice and roasty toasty. So when we put all those veggies on our bar pan, they immediately get that sizzle and go to town cooking. So you can preheat them. You can use them under the broiler. And you can actually put them in the dishwasher. So if they have this wavy pattern, they are now dishwasher safe. So even easier to clean. So if that was a little bit of a hang up before, um, your problems are solved with the new Stone Fusion. Now let's look at a piece of stoneware that's not Stone Fusion, just to kind of compare what that might look like on your stone. So here is a older bar pan. This is actually probably the model right before the Stone Fusion came out. So you can see there's no wavy pattern. It does say Pampered Chef in the middle, um, but we don't have that signature wave on there that indicates the Stone Fusion. So don't put it in the dishwasher and don't use it under the broiler unless we have that wavy pattern. Okay. All right. Um, now let's talk about seasoning our stones because one of the things that um, we talked about was not uh, putting it in the dishwasher, not using soap on those older styles of stones. So when you use a stone, one thing that makes it so fabulous is the more you use it, the more it's going to build up a seasoning. Think of a cast iron pan. People talk about their cast iron being seasoned. And on a cast iron pan, you don't use soap either. Um, so you're building up a seasoning on a stone and when you build up that seasoned stone, the darker it looks, the better it cooks. That's what we like to say. You're basically starting to create a natural uh, nonstick surface on your stone. So we love that. Now, when you get a brand new stone, uh, unglazed or naked stone in your house, it's going to look a little more like this. Perfectly clean, nice, fired uh, stoneware, stone fusion material here. So we're going to want to build up that seasoning and try to develop that nice dark color that we love over time to give us that natural non-stick. So the first few times you use your stone, you're going to want to um, spray it with some oil, brush it with oil, brush it with butter, depending on what you're cooking. Or the best way to season your stone is simply to cook foods on it that are kind of fatty and greasy. So maybe you're using your bar pan here, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and you're gonna cook a whole bunch of bacon on there. And that wonderful, delicious bacon grease is gonna help start to season your stone. Maybe you have a pizza stone. Um, you're gonna brush some oil on there and cook uh, some pizza on there. Maybe I have a smaller one and I'm gonna do some um, buttery, flaky biscuits on there. The more we're cooking on there and anything we can do um, that's fatty, that's buttery, that's gonna help season our stone more quickly. Now, one little note about this beautiful stone fusion we like, it is dishwasher safe. If you're putting it in the dishwasher, just beware that it's gonna take a little more time to build up that seasoning um, because you're washing it with soap in the dishwasher. It's gonna pull some of that off naturally. If you wanna build up that darker color and that natural seasoning as quickly as possible, just use hot water and your pan scraper um, you, and some friction. That actually is what cleans 
rather than uh, soap. So hot water and friction and every piece of stoneware is going to come with a scraper. You just scrape all the food particles off under hot water. You rinse it really well. It's perfect. Uh, it's going to maintain some of that seasoning you're building up and it's perfectly clean and safe to use. Okay. So you don't have to use soap on it. Um, soap is really there um, on your dishes to adhere to the food particles and pull them away. Well, because of the porosity on a stone, sometimes that soap can stick around if it's the older, um, the older formulation of stoneware, and we don't want your food tasting soapy. So that's why we say hot water, friction, pan scraper. And typically anyone in food service is going to tell you that that hot water and friction is really what cleans your, uh, your items. So, okay. So we talked about how stones came to be. They're mined in the USA, made in the USA. We talked about the porosity, why they cook so beautifully. Why else do we love them? We also love them because they maintain their heat. So when you take something out of the oven, uh, the stone's gonna stay hot a lot longer than a metal or a glass pan, which means your food's gonna stay nice and warm. So if you are using, for example, one of the awesome rectangle bakers, this is the largest, this is comparable to like a nine by 13 pan, and you're taking this to your table with a beautiful lasagna or casserole in it, it's gonna stay nice and hot for seconds and thirds when people go on back to dig in because of that beautiful natural stone material. So um, it also makes it fantastic to take with you if you are bringing a meal somewhere or if you're putting it out, you know, at Thanksgiving and people are kind of all coming through a line, you can rest assured that your food is going to stay nice and hot in your piece of stoneware. Now, um, something important to note with stoneware is because it is this natural material, we want to make sure that we are using the right size piece for whatever we're cooking. So um, the rule of thumb when you're cooking on stoneware is you want to um, have the surface of the stone covered about two thirds or 70%. That's to avoid thermal shock. If I only put like four or five little chicken nuggets on a piece of stoneware and I put it in the oven to cook, it could actually crack the stone because of that thermal shock. So we wanna have our food evenly uh, distributed on our stone and again, about 70% um, covered. So no worries because there's a piece of stoneware for whatever you want to cook. So for example, let's uh, take a peek. We have our traditional, our classic pizza stone here with these great handles and this great lip on the back to cut your pizza. We have the regular pizza stone. We have a medium that's kind of the size of like a frozen pizza, I like to say. And then we have, whoop, we have the little personal guy here. So three different sizes depending on um, what you're cooking. Same with our rectangle bakers. This is the large, there's a medium, and there's a small little guy as well. Um, our stone bar pans, we have three different sizes. So this is the large stone bar pan here. We have a medium, which you can kind of see the comparison here and then we have a small one the small one um, is actually a uh, toaster oven approved and air fryer approved for use in the pampered chef air fryer so that is awesome if you just want to cook a couple little biscuits or a couple cookies um, and you don't want to heat up your whole oven you can still get that beautiful cooking that you would on a piece of stoneware in your air fryer or your toaster oven of all things uh, which I think is so fun so match what you're cooking um, with the right piece of stoneware for the maximum benefit and to make sure that your stoneware doesn't experience that thermal shock because it would be just terribly sad and tragic uh, if that broke. <laughs> okay, so stone fusion we talked about um, and you can go ahead and put that in the dishwasher if you like. The other pieces of stoneware that you're able to put in the dishwasher are these fully glazed entertaining pieces. Um, now, when we talked about the porosity and how that's the perfect, um, the perfect formulation that just pulls away the right amount of moisture 
uh, of your foods. I just want to note that while the entertaining line is stoneware and it's going to give you that even cooking, it's going to stay hot longer, it is glazed. So you don't have that uh, porosity aspect because we have glazed that stoneware so it's not wicking away that moisture. Things are still going to cook really well. You're not going to burn them on here. Um, it has all of those wonderful features of stoneware, but that part is just going to be a smidge different. They do cook just a little bit different because of that glaze on the surface of the food. Now, these entertaining pieces are so gorgeous. <laughs> it's great that you can cook on them, you can make brownies in here and take them and they look beautiful. So this is the entertaining platter set. It comes with a large and a small. Um, this would be our chip and dip set. So we have this really beautiful ring. You can do like a big taco ring on here if you're familiar with that recipe. Um, you can do um, any kind of hot dip. You can put your, you can do a hot dip in here and do your chips and things around it. Just really, really versatile. This bowl is stoneware as well. We have a medium serving bowl. We have a whole set of the small little guys. Um, so those are beautiful and you can cook on them, but you don't have to. So that makes them really versatile. Um, oftentimes I actually will grab one of these platters and use it for like a charcuterie platter, for appetizers, um, things like that, because it just looks really pretty. And in fact, I actually have a customer who got these just because she thought they were so beautiful. And when she's not using them in her kitchen, she actually uses them as like centerpieces on her table with like candles and some greenery and things as a decoration because they're so gorgeous. So who knew stoneware could be not only functional, but so beautiful. Um, so these fully glazed entertaining pieces also can go in the dishwasher. The one uh, line of stoneware that cannot at this time go in the dishwasher or be used with soap is the partially glazed. So when it has that exposed stoneware plus the glaze, this one you're going to do friction, hot water with that hand scraper, okay? So just be cautious of that. Um, now, I want to chat a little bit as we think about uh, stoneware and just ways to really help you utilize it in your kitchen. If you're going to invest in a piece of stoneware, you want to get max use out of it and you want to fall in love with it. So if you have a stone bar pan, let's chat about that because we call the large bar pan the all day pan because this really can be used for everything from breakfast right on through dinner and into evening snacks. Okay. So this is our naked stoneware, our unglazed. So we've got that awesome, perfect porosity and that cooking surface. So think about breakfast. I mentioned bacon earlier, right? So this is a perfect way to get your family out of bed, especially if you have maybe teenagers or people that are not early risers anymore. You just take this bad boy and you fill it with bacon and you put that in your oven and that bacon smell is wafting through your house people are gonna come out, get out of bed because they wanna see what you're making. It smells so delicious. <laughs> and then, of course, we're seasoning that pan as well. So double bonus. Um, or maybe for breakfast, you want to do pancakes, but you just don't wanna sit over your stove and flip the pancakes. You can do a whole sheet pan pancake in here and then just cut that up and serve it to the whole family. It's not gonna burn in here. Um, and then everybody can sit down and eat at the same time. It's gonna keep them nice and warm until people are done with their seconds. For lunch, you can load this guy up with like six to eight grilled cheese sandwiches at one time, pop it in the oven and off they go. One benefit we haven't chatted about yet is when we're cooking on stoneware, because it's cooking so evenly, you don't need to flip your food, okay? So if you are cooking a whole uh, a bunch of french fries, for example, and the recipe says 10 minutes in, flip your french fries over, uh, and it's the middle of the summer or you're run running around like a busy person, the last thing you want to do is stop to deal with the flipping french fries <laughs> or flipping the flipping french fries. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that because it's cooking nice and evenly and maintaining that temperature. You just leave them on in there for the whole cook time. Same thing with those grilled cheese. They're going to cook nice and evenly. You don't have to flip them um, and then they'll be done for lunch. So think about that for lunch for the bar pan. Dinner, you're just going to get this bad boy ready. 
you're gonna get maybe your chicken or some fish, you're gonna get your veggies ready, toss it with some olive oil, seasoning, salt and pepper, whatever you like, and you're gonna make one big, beautiful sheet pan meal on here. One pan to worry about cleaning. Um, you're gonna take this puppy over to the table, set it down, everything's gonna stay nice and warm as people are digging in and eating, and you have a perfect family meal in your one large bar pan or your all day pan. And then of course, they don't call it a bar pan for nothing. Uh, you can do Toll House cookie bars, brownies, uh, cookies on here, something delicious and sweet to end your day um, and treat your family at the end of a long day before everyone hits the hay for bed and gets ready to do it all again. So uh, super versatile. Don't pigeonhole your stoneware into one thing or another. Same with the pizza stone. Put cookies on there if you're baking cookies at Christmas and need more pans to bake on. Or put your crescent rolls on there um, or your biscuits or whatever. Uh, you can use them for all sorts of things and they'll serve you really, really well in your kitchen. Um, another little known fact, or maybe you do know it because perhaps you have one of our very favorite things, the deep covered baker. So this is the deep covered baker. It's part of that partially glazed line. So naked on the inside, fully clothed on the outside with that beautiful glaze. Um, stoneware can go in the microwave oven, can go in your microwave. So if it fits in your microwave, you can cook in your microwave. I know a lot of people that actually use these little um, personal pizza sizes to cook in their microwave. Um, that small stone bar pan we talked about that works in the air fryer and the toaster oven, you can put that in your microwave. And this is a magic pot for your microwave or your oven. This is that deep covered baker. Um, and I'm sold on this <laughs> because you can make a cake in here in 12 minutes. Um, you can do corn on the cob in here. I will just peel my corn. I will put it in here. I don't even put water. Close it up, 12 minutes in my microwave. Um, and it just creates like this fabulous little brick oven in your microwave that perfectly cooks everything. There's a great recipe for rush hour chicken fajitas. You could cook your chicken and your peppers in here and just like I don't know, 15 minutes, I think it is. There's a whole host of recipes on the website, um, specifically for the deep cover baker for your microwave. And then of course you can use it in your oven for like the juiciest chicken in the world, um, along with a, a bevy of other things. But speaking of that recipe tab, as we talk about all of these beautiful stoneware pieces, maybe you have one in your kitchen, or maybe you're debating like, which piece would I like to add to my kitchen? Go to the Pamper Chef website, right up at the top, there's that little menu bar, click recipes. And when you're on that recipe tab, you'll notice over on the left hand side, I guess this would be your left, over on the left hand side, um, there's going to be some categories of meals. But if you scroll down a little bit, it's going to talk about the um, piece of equipment. So you can specifically search recipes for the deep covered baker, for example. You select that, all the recipes related to this piece will pop up. The other thing you can do is go to the website, type in your piece of stoneware right in the search bar, and it's gonna pull up search options and you'll see a little tab that says products or recipes. If you click on recipes there, same thing, it's gonna come up with all sorts of recipes related to that piece of stoneware. So that's kind of a little resource tip for you if you have some of these beautiful pieces, but you're a little lost on what to do with them or how to use them, or you need some new inspiration to just make sure that they are um, serving you to their max benefit in your kitchen. So that's a little stoneware 101. Of course, it's just kind of touching <laughs> the scratching the surface here, but hopefully it gives you a little bit of confidence to either snag a piece and add it to your kitchen or uh, to just make use of the ones that you maybe have that you were about to uh, head off to the thrift store in your spring cleaning. Don't do that, put them to use, and I think you'll fall back in love with stoneware like we are here at Pampered Chef. I'll see you soon.